Hello, everybody. I hope you are having an absolutely wonderful day. Zero Project is off to a huge and amazing start, and we have a fabulous fireside chat planned here, focused on a very new idea that I didn't even know about until last night called the Purple Economy. And this is a super exciting way that we can approach inclusion, diversity, and how we can use that to create value in the economy. So I have with me my colleague Depesh from Enable India. And Depesh, let's just start off with that basic question, what is the purple economy? And how is it different than how we think of the economy today as kind of a social economy? Thank you so much. And what a lovely partner to have a fireside chat with, Anthony. And um, I think I'm so delighted to be here, first of all, at the Zero Project. This is my first time. I think it's fantastic um, to see that. And um, so what is purple economy? I think um, I have to go way back to the evolution of humankind and, <laughs> and start from there to, to what we are today. And um, so I think I just learned from some wise person to say, we as humans, I think the human evolution, and we are called homo sapiens. And uh, homo sapiens are wise men or wise humans or feeling humans. Sorry, the wise humans are... Um, knowing humans. But I think the whole race is going towards something called homo sentience. Mm. And what are homo sentience? Homo sentience are feeling humans. Mm. Right? And what is homo sentience uh, doing basically? Homo sentience actually is ushering a culture of uh, equity, mm. culture of politics of collaboration, culture of um, knowing things and all that, and feeling with humans and all that. So I think what is happening and why it is so important, this culture, like we see whole, um, the whole LGBTQ, the Me Too movements, the Black Lives Matters, and all that, I think we can see that more and more the human race is going towards the, uh, I call it the homo sentience, where the feeling human is happening. Mm. And why this is important, and I am seeing that the person with disability is definitely there. And I think that whole part of the human race where person with disability and uh, afterthought is not there. And I think it's going to be very important and we are poised at a place mm -hmm. where uh, person with disability are very, very critical, uh, critical mass where we need to uh, look at. So what does it mean? And I think if you look at when I say uh, feeling humans or homo sentience, we are seeing the whole thing about what are we talking about sustainable development goals, we are talking about social, um, there is Catalyst 2030, there is so much happening and there is a whole social enterprises or the social economy we call it, where we all know about the social economy of why it is important and um, uh, what is happening in the social economy. And um, so getting to the next thing and while I was think we were thinking of this whole social economy, uh, something came up saying that how did the glasses came about, the spectacles which I wear? Yeah. And uh, I, I just Googled and found that in, in the 13th century, there's a person called Salvino uh, from Italy. He basically found two convex lenses and put it on the wooden frame and started wearing for uh, him to see clearly. Mm, mm. And um, so that was a solution. What are we calling? That's an assistive solution yeah. today. And from there, Today, if you look at it, it's become a whole industry, the mm. eyewear industry, the eyeglasses industry, we call it. And what I was reading is it's going to be a $141 billion economy by 2026. Huge, right? So we talk about a solution like an eyewear, and today we talk about I want designer glasses and mm. all that, right? And connected to that, there has been study done on return on disability, which says the person with disability has a disposable income of about $8 trillion. And when you include, and we saw that Valuable Find had also put that out, uh, Kalan and Casey, good friend, uh, has spoken about a $13 trillion economy, which if you include persons with disability and the family and friends, mm -hmm. a disposable income. And that's the economy we are talking about, saying that how do I touch that economy? Added to that, you look at, um, there is a whole study done, and this was done by the World Bank and the ILO, mm. which says that there is three to seven percent of the GDP is foregone if you don't include people with disability, mm. you ignore people with disability. So as you can see, something out there, I don't know, which we are seeing, 
And this economy basically is what we are calling it purple economy. And uh, this is the term Shanti, my wife, who's a um, uh, co-founder and CEO of Enable India as well, spoke about this at the World Economic Forum. Wow. Now we can imagine that word, this is topic happening. So at the World Economic Forum, we also talked about social economy, one out, the purple economy coming in. And with this, I think the whole purple movement is beginning. Mm. I think Kate Nash had uh, something on purple light up. There is so much of things happening and we are associating purple with the disability sector. And uh, this is the whole point of uh, the saying that there is a purple economy and I think this is the beginning of purple economy. And one last thing I also want to say, which I realized that at Enable India, we did a study of economic impact study. And when we did the economic study impact, saying that what is the Im economic impact as an NGO or a non-profit organization we are doing, we found that every $1 which we get as fund, we give back $15 to the society. Mm. And you can see that is an economy again by just uh, working for the cause is adding. So this is the whole idea where we are seeing the purple economy has to be in the forefront. I, I can't say enough how much I love everything that you're saying. First of all, I love that you started the story from the beginning of humankind. Uh, and that's just a great way of starting any story, I think. The second thing I love is how you pointed out that there's so many important economic factors that we need to take into account when we're dealing with issues of inclusion and especially with issues of disability rights. So if we're leaving out these huge markets, Companies can't afford to do that in the future. And I think they know that, and now we're just scrambling to find ways of making that happen. And I think one of those ways is innovation, is just taking new ideas and giving them life. So I'd like to hear from you, what do you see the role of innovation when it comes to this issue of the purple economy? Absolutely, Anthony, and I think if you look at um, anything when you talk about growth, economy, I think innovation has to be there. And in this case, what I believe is, uh, here is an industry which is growing. There is so much to learn. So many things are evolving. So many things emerging. We are learning on a day-to-day -day basis. Things are happening. So innovation has to be on the center because only innovations is going to get, get to that levels and all that. And many times we kind of see that innovations, what I see is, it happens sometimes in pockets. But conferences like this, what is this conference, Zero Project Conference? It's a platform. It's a platform where we bring people, we bring innovations, we give big ideas, we bring uh, funders, we bring um, aggregators, we bring accelerators together to take the innovation to the next level. So what I see is what is required is by creating innovations and creating platforms like this, uh, what we can do is get innovations up there. And um, one of my ideas basically, and we have been talking as well, with multiple partners is to create a disability innovative solutions hub mm. where we can actually get all the players in in the space of assistive solutions and social processes mm. innovations on a platform where we can talk and the important thing in that mm. is the problem in the center it has to be the user in the center because you don't want to innovate and find that it's finally not helping the person so i think innovation in the center and a search engine or a search where people with any problems can look at solutions to kind of look at that is going to be very 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 important and that is the thing and tomorrow we have a panel discussion on the whole scale up hub we are calling on uh, disability in innovative solutions hub so I think you'll listen more about it as well, what that means. That's absolutely amazing. Uh, one of the things I really resonate with is this user-centered design issue. And one of my former students says that user-centered design is only as good as the user at the center of that design. And if you put people like me at that center of that design, you're just gonna get more of the same. But if you put someone with a disability at the center of that design, then suddenly you have something that works better for everyone. Now, I want to make sure that they heard there's a session tomorrow on this uh, hub, on this innovation scale hub, scale-up hub. Mm -hmm. uh, so please take a look at the programs and check in on that session because it's going to be awesome. Now, I know you do a lot of work with grassroots empowerment. So I'm wondering how you see the role of grassroots organizations and individuals contributing to this concept, this high-level concept of the purple economy. 
That's a super question, and I think, Anthony, I completely connect with the user set and design, like you say. And if you don't involve the users, where is the innovation coming and what is happening? And I always say that um, the whole thing is about if I, I think many times we find out that the world is what I know. Mm -hmm. It's only a dot because there is so much of things you don't know. Can I create uh, systems or processes where I can go and um, get what I don't know and understand what I don't know? Mm -hmm. So this is where the grassroots innovation comes in. And one of the uh, things, basically, uh, Dan is here. So I was, uh, we were sitting and talking to Dan, and I was, um, Dan is from Enable India. and. Uh, then has a physical disability with his hand. So he was telling me one day in the session saying that, Deepesh, I can catch a toothbrush, but I don't have motor movements for brushing my teeth. Mm. So I use an electric toothbrush. I'm like, oh, OK, that's a simple solution. <laughs> and uh, same thing, I went to a class of our um, computer training for visually impaired. And I asked them, how do you identify your toothbrush in the morning? Mm. And uh, yeah, because sometimes if you're a family, you basically have uh, green color, blue color toothbrush, you pick it up and do it. So the hand came up and this person tells, um, I just use, use an elastic band on the toothbrush, feel that and pick it up. Mm. I make a small scratch at the bottom, mm. feel it and pick it up. Yeah. What are these? These are solutions, very simple solutions out there where people, and you can imagine somebody will go and innovate a color recognition device for the toothbrush, <laughs> not required. <laughs> So I think that that's what so what I mean is basically when you look at involving and this is where basically idea idea is to restore agency at mm. that person saying that you are an innovator. Mm. You have been innovating because you had a necessity. Mm. And that is the thing basically we want to get there. So what we started doing and if what you want to work on an economy, I think you need to reach out to the unknowns and you need to scale mm. things so that you can reach to the grassroots. You can understand that bring in those solutions, innovations, and all that, and bring into the forefront for the economy to survive. And this is the whole idea of Discovery Awards. Mm. And today, and I think where we started to discover such grassroots innovation, I think we have got a Discovery Awards happening tomorrow, mm. where 10 countries have signed up, and more and more countries are getting involved to take that up, to take it to the next level. And it's a very, very exciting time. So I can see that this whole thing about nothing about us without us. Mm is so important. And that's where I can see that when you bring in that thing to the purple economy, it's going to be amazing. I, uh, I truly believe in this vision because I don't believe solutions that are generated at the top can make true impact on the ground at the bottom. I think you must have innovation that occurs at the grassroots level and be, can be scaled up. So uh, it gets into this issue where we have people who are facing problems every day right? They're coming into contact with those points of friction and those issues. And they've solved those problems really elegantly, very simply often. And they have those solutions that they use all the time that we're not aware of because there's not that opportun opportunity to scale up. And those awards that you mentioned, which will be happening tomorrow, which I highly encourage everybody to attend, are going to be amazing opportunities for those individuals to gain recognition for those innovations. Depesh, you are an absolute, just amazing role model. I'm really, really grateful to have an opportunity to connect with you. And I hope everybody has a chance to connect with Depesh at the conference. Super. Thank you so much, Anthony. And what a lovely, uh, I think, partner to have for a fireside. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>